In today's video, we'll use watercolor brush pens to paint tropical flowers. The pens give you all the control of a marker, but with a touch of water, they render out into beautiful paints. We've got a lot of flowers to cover, so let's get started. Hi friends, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and today I am covering all your tropical requests from Protea to Anthurium. And our video is sponsored by the lovely Genuine Crafts. I'll be using their brush pens. You'll find a link to the product in the description. For now, let's talk supplies. We are using Canson cold pressed watercolor paper. You need good paper for these brush pens to work. You need proper watercolor paper. The texture of cold pressed I find to be the most suitable for these pens to uh, render out to work properly. I wanted to do another tutorial using these brush pens because so many of you have purchased them and are loving them. I have the set of 100, so what I've done here is I've developed my color palette ahead of time. I've picked out all of the markers that I wanna use. Um, and that's because there's just so many. So you wanna take a minute to think about a color palette. You know, give that some thought and your piece is going to be so much more sophisticated. The pens render out beautifully with just a little bit of water, and we'll talk about that in a sec for anyone that's completely new to this product. I'm also using today two synthetic round brushes, um, a large and a very tiny one. I've got some clean water, paper towel for blotting, and of course I have my genuine craft brush pens. Now you can see they have a round uh, synthetic brush, comes to a beautiful fine point, but it has a nice belly there as well. And let's practice using them. You can use the tip or the belly, and it's just like using a round watercolor brush. You can use the fine point Point, or you can drag the belly across the page and get those beautiful washes or splotches of color. So practice on some scrap paper, but if you're familiar with watercolor painting and brushes, I don't think you'll find that these are a very big jump. In fact, you gain a lot of control when using this product. You can layer the pens and mix colors with ease, and then when you add the water, you're able to refine the shapes. You can move the paint around on the page. You can uh, further mix the colors that you've blended with the pens, and you can just play and have a lot of fun with this product. As I said, these pens are from Genuine Crafts and they have some new products coming up next month, so be sure to follow them on social so that you're in the know. All right, so let's get into our tropical flowers. I'm taking a green here, and I am just starting with a leaf. It's just a warm up. It, this is a palm, uh, a fan palm, and it kind of, all the leaves go out in the shape of a round fan. So all I'm doing is I'm either pulling the brush towards me or I'm pushing it away from me, and I'm using the belly and the fine tip to create these fun leafy shapes. Then what I'll do is to get some nice color variation, I'll come back with a darker green and I'll add a little bit on each leaf. All right, next we're going to do jasmine. Now jasmine is a white flower, which means I'm going to use some gray to give me some definition. And I'm going to do a lot of gray shading at the center of each petal, but then on the outside of those five petals, I'm doing just the finest line. I'll place a little bit of yellow in the middle and I think I'll add a second flower. So this brush, uh, it gives you the detail or the control that you need to do those very, very fine lines when you're working with a delicate petal, especially a delicate white petal. Next, we're going to do an orchid. So I've started with a curving line in pencil that will act as my guide. And then at the end of that line, I'll take the tip of my green brush and do some little stems. And then I'm gonna take this beautiful, uh, cool pink and do some little buds, three little oval shapes. They can be very nondescript because you can move that paint around once you wet it. I'll add a little bit of darker pink for a bit of shading. And then I'm going to start erasing sections of that curving line as I add the orchid flowers. The one at the bottom is gonna be the largest. I'm just sort of doing four petals. This is not like a proper orchid. This is my <laughs> very simplistic orchid. Again, I'm layering those two pink pens um, so that I can achieve some beautiful shading. And as I add two more flowers, the flowers get smaller as I move up along the curving line. 
and I'm continuing to layer those pinks um, for some beautiful contrast within the flowers. I'll also finish the stem and then what I'm going to do with this orchid all finished is I'm going to get some water on my synthetic brush and I'm going to jump back to the fan palm here and we're going to uh, start rendering these three flowers. So I'm just adding clean water with the delicate touch of that synthetic brush and I'm able to blend the color really beautifully. And as I said in the beginning, I'm able to move the paint around. So if you're not happy with the shape that you laid down, or if you want a more natural, more watercolor shape, this is your chance to do that. And you'll see as I render out the gray of the jasmine flower, just how delicate these um, paints can be. I get to keep some of the harder lines of the outer petal, but I get to really blur all the gray at the center of that flower. And I think that is just part of the control that you get with these pens. It's really nice um, if you're new to watercolors or if you have been doing watercolors for a long time, but you have a project that's really detailed. And you'll see as we layer these pens even further, just how much detail you really can achieve. I've blended the center of the jasmine flowers for that watercolor look, and then we're gonna jump over to the orchid, and I have a lot of pink marker here that I wanna render out, so I'm just really working it with that larger round brush and lots of water. Um, one or two people had commented to me that you were still seeing the lines of the brush pen when you added the water. I think my only suggestion there, my only fix is that um, try using a proper cold pressed watercolor paper with a good amount of texture and you may see some lines depending how dark your lines are or how multiple they are but um, that can be a good thing you may want to use the lines sometimes but I think just using these pens on proper watercolor paper is so important. So you can see these beautiful orchids are coming together. They're getting very blurred out and we're losing a lot of the detail. And I like that. I wanna get a simple watercolor painting here and then I'll come back with the brush pens and add further detail. But for now, we're going to jump down and I'm going to do the anthurium flower. So this one has a large yellow stamen. So we'll start with those. Two stamens here for two flowers. And then I'm going to go around and do this sort of rounded diamond shape for the large blossom that sits behind that stamen. Now these flowers are usually bright red and this is part of uh, my artistic choice. I, I am not into bright colors, but seeing as we're doing tropical flowers, I've tried to choose a thoughtful color palette that appeals to me, light pinks, burgundies. So you're always able to, as the artist to make the choice to say, I'm going to change red to burgundy, or I'm going to change pink to purple. Um, and the, your viewer will still understand wh what you're getting at. Next, we're doing the hibiscus here and I start with the stamen again. And then I'm going to go around that and do five round petals. All of them sort of overlap one another. I'm using a very light creamy yellow for this now. And you'll notice that each petal, it's a little darker at the center. And then I use less brush pen or less pigment as I move outward. And that's going to help with the look of this flower, the concave look of the hibiscus um, when we do add the water. I'm also adding some light pink at the center of the flower and that will help with the shading and the shaping as well. Next, so we're going to do another fern or palm frond. I start with the stem in the center. Then I give myself a pencil guide so I know where to place each leaf as I begin to draw these long, thin leaves. I want to take a sec to thank Genuine Crafts for sponsoring today. They've just started the Genuine Crafts Club. Members get access to exclusive deals and promotions. There's giveaways, tutorials, there's contests with prizes, and there's lots of chances to be featured on their social media pages. So if you're building your own brand, you'll want to check them out. And finally, if you'd like to get 15% off the products that you're seeing in this video, click the link below. So let's grab some water and with this close up, I think you'll get a real sense for how beautifully these pens render out when you do add that water. You can see me moving the paint around and how this pen just turns into paint like magic when the water hits the page. 
and I'm getting a beautiful wash of watercolor paint for the large anthurium blossom. And I'm just moving the paint around and trying to shape that blossom to make it look natural and perfectly imperfect and not too stiff. And we'll get in close to the stamen here. I'm going to be careful about touching it for a moment. I'm also going to use a dry brush to give myself a bit of a highlight on this blossom. And then I'll add a little water to the stamen just on one side. You'll notice if I leave white space, the paint will not touch, it will not bleed, but I want it to bleed slightly for that beautiful watercolor look, that whimsical watercolor look and I'll continue to shape the second flower. And then we're going to move on to the hibiscus. And this one, we did a lot of shading ahead of time with our brush pens. So now when we add the water, all the work is done for us. The pink is going to flow into that yellow and that yellow is going to get lighter and more translucent on the outer edges of each petal because we placed a little less marker there. So you get this beautiful concave looking flower with the nice pink center. Now for the fern or the palm frond, I'll erase my pencil guidelines first off and then I'm going to come in here with my brush, my little brush, and we'll just start shaping these leaves. I've mixed two colors of green here and I thought this one blended particularly nicely. It just looks really natural, has a beautiful watercolor look to it and I just let the uh, the paint sort of sit and blend and as it dried, it dried beautifully and gave me a really nice natural look. Okay, we've got six flowers, only three more to go. Our seventh flower is the Bird of Paradise. And I start with a pointed oval green leaf and then a stem that comes down almost at a 90 degree angle. And then we'll grab some orange, and, or I've got sort of a peach, not an orange, I'm scared of orange. Um, and I'm doing these long straight petals. They're sort of thin ovals, or they can just be lines, uh, vertical lines, and they move outward there from that oval shaped leaf. And then we'll do one gray petal in there as well. Now that would normally be blue, but again, as the artist, I'm choosing my color palette thoughtfully. And moving on, um, we have to kind of move at a pace because we've got so much to cover. We are doing the ginger flower and I make a cone shape that's made up of these little scribbled areas. So you give yourself lots of negative space there in between each little patch of pink. Uh, and ginger as well is sort of this bright peachy red. So I'm choosing to do it in this cool pink. Um, but I think it's still very recognizable. And then I am going to enclose that conical blossom with some leaves and they can all be sort of different sizes and uh, I might add a bit of a darker green at the base there and give myself just a little bit of shading. I think that'll uh, do nicely when I do render it out with water. And then for our final flower, this is the protea. I think I'm saying that right. I'm sorry if that's wrong. Um, I'm going to draw a circle and the protea has these petals that surround the center, almost like a crown, but I'll, I'll erase those. We'll start with just a circle and we're going to use our gray brush pen to um, do a whole bunch of lines out from center and we sort of create this area that looks very um, like a half sphere and the lines don't quite meet giving us a bit of a highlight in the center then i'll take my burgundy brush pen and i'm going to do that crown that surrounds the circle and there's all these tiny little triangles and they just pop up on all sides and then at the front where the viewer is sort of looking at this flower we're going to continue those little triangles into a bit of a point um, where they'll meet the stems this is my very loose protea flower i'll add some um, some green uh, leaves and a stem and I've used the burgundy of course because I'm trying to repeat colors as much as I can so that this will look like a cohesive piece when I'm all done. Now let's render these last three flowers. For the bird of paradise um, I think the peach looks really really pretty the light colors render really beautifully um, because you you really don't see any streaky lines although with the dark ones if you put enough color on the page you're not going to get any lines either and you really saw that with the anthurium 
I'm going to let the gray and the orange or the peach blend just slightly. And then I've got this beautiful dark green leaf here. And I'm, I allowed the paint to touch. The peach and green paint are now touching. I haven't left any space. So that allows for blending. I got a little more blending or um, seeping than I bargained for. You can see me trying to clean it up here, um, but that's fine. And then I just sort of went with it. I was like, okay, that looks really natural. I can come back, I can add more color later. So I allowed the bleeding to happen and I guided it out into the flower and I get this beautiful watercolor bird of paradise. For the ginger flower, I'm going to be a little bit more careful and I won't quite let the green and the pink touch, maybe just slightly. Um, so you can always leave a line of negative space and if you do that, your paint will not run. Your watercolors cannot go where the page is dry. They can't just run onto dry page. That's like, they can't do that. It's not their superpower. <laughs> their superpower is bleeding into wet areas. They're very good at that. So I am finishing up the ginger flower and then I'm going to move over here to the protea. And it's just the same drill, uh, adding lots of water and it's up to you to decide how much you want those colors to blend and bleed. You can wait for the burgundy to dry and then when you come back in and do the gray, you won't get any bleeding because as I said, if the page is dry, the watercolor paint cannot run onto it. It will only run or bleed where there is wet surface. Um, but I'm gonna allow mine to blend and bleed a little bit. I think that's okay, especially since the gray is so light and I'm going to add and layer more gray pen once this is fully dry. So I'm just gonna finish up with these leaves and then we are going to be all done our first layer. So those are nine tropical plants. I know they look a little they look a little naked right now, I'd say. They need more detail. I'm not quite happy with that bright green up top. Um, I wanna add a lot more detail to the orchid. So now that I've allowed this to dry, especially the top ones are completely dry, I can come back in and I can continue to add detail. You can continue to layer these brush pens. They're amazing for that. So I can add these tiny little detail lines to the center of the jasmine. And then it's up to me if I wanna bleed those out with more water or if I just wanna leave them because they look so detailed and so pretty. So I'm adding a little bit more shading to the orchid. You can see I've changed the color of that top palm frond a little bit. I'll add these wonderfully delicate lines to the center of the hibiscus. I've got so much control with these pens and I'm gonna add a single line in the center of each leaf on this uh, fern. And same thing with the Bird of Paradise, just adding a bit of line shading to the leaves. As I said, the protea, I wanted to um, darken that gray and sort of re-add all that line shading detail. And I'm really, really happy with the way these flowers are coming together with this second layer of brush pen. Any areas that got washed out and too light, you can color over them. You can add shading and line detail. And um, then I'm gonna show you in a sec here what I choose to render out and what I will choose to keep just as the brush pen. I'm also adding a few leaves to some of the flowers, adding a bit more shading to the anthurium. So I'm just able to step back and say, okay, what does this piece need? And now you'll see I'll render out some things, some of the things I added, like the uh, jasmine flowers and the hibiscus flowers. I definitely need to add water there because I don't want there to just be brush pen that's not rendered. Um, and then the hibiscus flower, I'm going to render, I'm going to add water to the lines in the center, but then I may even add more lines. So I just keep going, I just keep layering and layering and layering, and I guess that's why this video got so long. <laughs> And you'll see with the bird of paradise here, I keep some of the lines, but I blur them just slightly. Same thing with the ginger. I want some of those lines on the leaves, but I wanna just give them a bit of a blur for that watercolor look. So I'll just add a touch of water. And the orchid needs a bit more work. Those lines are too stiff. We're gonna render them out and get that beautiful shading. 
and then we are gonna let that dry completely. And once it has, it took about 20 minutes, I'd say, we're going to come back in yet again and add more brushwork detail. So now I'm gonna add those final tiny lines. I'm going to add just a touch more shading on that orchid. And uh, one last thing I wanted to share for the orchid, after I had finished shading it this third time, <laughs> I added a little bit of paint pen or white gel pen also worked here. I tried both and I just blended that a little bit with water for a bit of a messier look. You could also use gouache here, nice water-based uh, medium. And then when I sort of blended that with the brush pen, I was able to get some of that beautiful white uh, spotting that the orchid petals are um, so known for. Okay, and that is all done. I've done a bazillion layers, but that is really the beauty of these watercolor brush pens. You can keep layering and get all the detail that you really, really want, and that will make your piece really pop. Thank you again to Genuine Crafts for sponsoring our video today. If you're interested in their products, check the video description for all the links. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you soon with a new tutorial.